the topic tonight was um, uh, the challenge of finding Baba in others. And I wanted to relate this happened quite a number of years ago. You know, certain people would come to the center and you wouldn't necessarily know whether they had met Baba or not. <clears throat> and this woman had come a number of times and we were in the refectory one day and I actually found that she had met Baba. Her name was Anita Butalik. And we were sitting there and and this is this this is what she told me about her meeting with Bob. And uh, it's not recorded anywhere. She has long since passed on, so this may be all that survives of her uh, time with Bob, unless they recorded some of this stuff at the time. But anyway, she was she was living in New York, and and she she was very devoted to Jesus, but she began going to the uh, Monday night meetings, which had took place there since the 40s. And, but uh, that's Fred and Ella Winterfeld and Adele Walk and Phyllis Frederick and John Bass, a whole lot of those old timers. And she went to those meetings and then she moved back, I might've been her home state, back to Wisconsin and she got married and, um, and she was, uh, pregnant and when uh, then when Bob was coming in 1956 the Monday night group contacted her and told her would you like to meet Mayor Baba and in spite of being pregnant and all that her husband was fine with it she came to New York and I don't know if this took place in Ivy Deuce's apartment or where uh, or the apartment that Fred Winterfelt uh, managed, but she uh, she was there waiting to go in for her interview with Baba, along with a, a number of other people. And Adi, she said, Adi was there with Baba, and he he made a gesture like this, and um, you know, and sent him out there. That was supposed to be the first person. I don't know if this was the first interview of this 1956 or the first interview of that day. Uh, but anyway, I think it might have been the first interview in 1956. But he goes out and he looks around. He thought Bob was referring to someone who was overweight. So he was looking around. No one seemed to answer that description. He went back again. Bob, you know, indicated again and he got the idea. It must be some woman who's pregnant. So he went back there and he asked if anybody was pregnant and she raised her hand. And so she had the first interview. And so she she went in, and you know, n uh, never having met Baba before, she was very worried that she was going to have some complication with, with this child, with the birth of this child, quite worried about it. And Baba somehow convinced her that she had nothing to worry about, and that that worry went completely from her. And then she kind of shared with Baba her love uh, her devotion to Jesus and Baba was very pleased with her devotion but then this is what he said to her you have made one big mistake in your spiritual life you have put God in heaven and until you find him in everyone you meet your religion will always be lopsided I, and I thought, I, I kind of, when she told me that, I kind of felt like she might have just been thinking of God, the transcendent God, and really not thinking that he's down here in each of us as well. But anyway, this became the theme of her life. And she, you know, was a, for all those years, a religious counselor. But she, when you were with her, you, you got her full attention. It was like just you and her and the universe. She was you know, kind of like Kitty or any of the Mondali, so one-pointed that you actually felt truly acknowledged. And so a very beautiful uh, person. And uh, luckily, um, I don't know if that's written down, but I'm really glad that I remembered and I wrote it down, what Baba said to her. So um, let's see, J. Seema, I'm ho uh, hoping that J. Seema can this is on finding Baba in others. And uh, 
let's let's go down let's um what about goher can you re, uh, read that uh starting sure. with remembering that famous claim okay remembering that famous claim i love humanity it's people i can't stand what comes to mind as a really challenging encounter with someone who gave you a hard time and maybe this is an ongoing situation in everyday life how do you deal with folks you need to get along with neighbors colleagues employers spouses relatives shopkeepers medical practitioners at all even when particularly when even when particularly when they are they and you are not seeing eye to eye how much of your day to day interactions with others are on automatic pilot where you behave routinely perhaps due to overload too much going on anxiety or just plain habit do you think awareness triggered by listening more could help what helps you bring out the better angels of everyone's nature theirs and yours do some people come by this disposition this openness more easily than others if so can it be developed what role can does could patients play in seeing baba in others what if the person has behaved like a scoundrel and is still doing that what then how are we supposed to respond to such a person what's the difference between seeing baba in them and making excuses for them do you find yourself continuing to accept abusive situations and behavior in the name of love is there a better way maybe keeping them at a safe distance and yet holding them in your heart compassion and empathy how do they fit in here what do we experience when we find baba in others is this just another way of coming to acceptance could finding baba in everyone i meet be to delight in their company a welcoming loving acceptance of them without necessarily knowing consciously that we are doing this so yeah so um one of the things that um I think that's fine, Jaysima. Yeah. You know, uh, I was looking for this one quote that I remember reading long ago, and I contacted Mayor Prasad, and he actually found it, the the place. But it was there was a woman that that did the murals in the tomb, and she was kind of like an antisocial person that did you know was kind of un, unhappy with being with the other women Mandalay up on the hill, in the 30s. and she kind of complained to baba and baba said to her but the path is through people and that's the big challenge i mean i think if we were just working within ourselves we have a lot fewer obstacles you might say in getting to baba but we have all these people out there and 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 um and baba saying the path is through people so mm-hmm. you can't just go up in the himalayas and and attain that experience. Mm-hmm. And ba- another thing that baba says everyone is first in importance and no one is second. So there's really kind of no uh, escape in a way. But I I'm going to just give a few ways that I I saw in the Mandali um and then I'm hoping that this might stimulate you to think of different challenges that you have in finding uh, contacting baba in others but also um some of the cha- not only just challenges but some of the things that have worked but one of the things that I found from the mandala and I and all of you who met them is they gave you a feeling of belonging you know that was I felt one of the greatest gifts from the mandala is they they took you on as family and that particular thing ties in with being accepted by baba it was a beautiful thing but now some people 
some people can see Baba in others. I've heard over the years. I felt with Erich, uh, in talking with him, that he saw others as Baba in disguise. You know, and he would. It, Sometimes he would uh, he would say, "I love you, Baba," not "I love you," you know, Marion. I love you, Tony. I love you, Baba. Every once in a while, he let that slip. Uh, Darwin, he he used to say that he looked upon people as uh, each one as a as a, a potential spiritual aspirant. So he kind of elevated who they might be, even if they're not interested in spirituality at the time. And um, <clears throat> I know Don Stevens, his whole approach was to create a loving Baba atmosphere and everybody who was there could be a part of that. Uh, that was kind of his method. And, uh, and uh, just the last one is Dr. Harry Kenmore. <laughs> he used to believe in flowing right through everyone. Each person flow through them. Don't get stopped by, you know, the likes and dislikes, your reactions to them. Flow right through them. And so these are these are just some of the ways that <clears throat> that I observed. But so I'm gonna like open it to you folks. Uh, anyone want to share some of their struggles, say, challenges in trying to trying to deal with others in a way that you feel is the way you would like that interaction to be. The way you think Baba would, uh, <clears throat> that it has the proper kind of experience of Baba in it. <laughs> Anyone? Um, I mean, or does anybody have? Okay, Michael. Oh, I yeah, I think. Good. I'm gonna leave it to who? Who is the host on this? Is uh, that Mayor Prasad? Uh, or, oh, oh, it's Jay Seema. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, yeah I think it ahead. was. Dave, who raised his hand first. Okay. Dave Lohman. Dave. Hey, Dave. Hi there. Yeah. Hi. Um, you folks can hear me? Yeah, we hear you yeah. fine. Okay. I worked in the electronics industry for about 30 years. And after I came back from India and really feeling like my heart was opening up, I felt a really, I, I, I opened up to the other engineers in the group that I worked with, people I was really enjoying work with. And because, I think it was because I had found something that they kind of had a negative attitude towards, I ended up having to, to leave the industry completely and buy my tractor because I felt like I was kind of despised almost. And, and that's because I had found something that made me feel really whole. And I guess they were jealous. I don't know uh, why, but their reaction to me was so negative, I had to pull out of the industry and go off on it, sitting on a tractor. And it, it, it is a very sad thing that that happened, but it happened almost on purpose at the same time because Baba led me into doing other things, particularly with my tractor. I, I, my, my name that Bell gave me is Lemon Mummy, I mean, Lemon, not Lemon Mummy, Lemon Tractor Daddy. 
Lemon that, Tractor Daddy. Yeah, that's what Bell <laughs> called me. Lemon yeah. Tractor Daddy. There, there was one thing that Bow, Bow said uh, in the barn one time. With Baba, you don't have to renounce the world. The world will renounce you. <laughs> oh, that's that's kind of what happened to me. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah. But at the same time, the world opened up. Yeah. It was just a different direction. Yeah. And you kind of plowed your way <laughs> over the next decades. This is very true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I I had a very loving experience with my tractor that I was able to haul it down to Marymount and do some tractor work down there for Agnes. And I lived up in Northern California and and her property down at Marymount was in Ojai. And for whatever reason, and I have no clue why, I can't remember why, I, I was drawn to bring my tractor down to her. And my wife thinks, oh, Betty's my wife, by the way. Um, my wife thinks that it was Baba directing me. And that is such a lovely, lovely feeling that Baba directed me from one point to another. And it was just so wonderful, so wonderful and such beautiful payback. Yeah. That's just, I, 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 I hope I'm on the subject that you were looking yeah. for. Yeah, that's it. Like I say, adjusting to other people is, <laughs> is not an easy thing. One of the greatest challenges. Yeah. Next we have Michael. Hi all, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear okay. you clearly. Well, it's been a subject of mine for uh, a long time, since the 69 Darshan. The, um, I went to Harry's, Kenmore's group, and I really had an antipathy to him. He was a personality type that really rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> and I said to myself, you know, Baba loves him. I mean, who might argue with whom Baba loves? He's part of this family. And now I've joined that family. I don't have to get into a, an intimate relationship with him, but I do know I had to accept him. And so then I just began to look deeper into my own feelings about Harry and what he represented to me rather than what was wrong with him. Because obviously, as far as Bob was concerned, there was nothing wrong with him. So that's <laughs> so always my problem. And um, <laughs> And it just kept on growing like that. Now, I've had my feelings terribly hurt dealing with other people. And um, and I've been at this, been a devotee on, I've been on this search now for 50 years. And I've gotten to the point where I do see Baba and everyone. And part of it has to do with the, the experience I had with Bao in, in uh, 2009 where I was so, oh, I can't explain it, but I was stricken with, um, I'd always felt like I was being squeezed through this glass pane that I'd always looked at the universe, not the universe, but Baba and, and myself. It was glass. And the first time I experienced Baba, was this as a, in a mirror where I saw my true self. So I'm looking through this mirror, but this time I feel like I'm going through it. It's become gelatinous like jello and I'm excruciating pain. And I don't know what to do, but I, I'm driven to go to Mayor, uh, Mayorana and read my poetry. And I, I go up there and a friend of mine said when he saw me in those days, he thought I was going to die. Of course, I don't remember that. Not that I looked at myself in the mirror very much. And, um, and other people there just knew that I had this kind of a malaise or 
spiritual sickness. And I asked Bao, I went up to him after the meeting and he had, we, he had given his first talk in Mayorana and he took my hand and it was so soft. He put his other hand on top of it and looked up at me and said, Michael, you're a good man. And uh, even now, when I remember that, I'm so, I was so overwhelmed with emotion that I had been, I felt like the prodigal son who had come home after being in the wilderness for decades. So after the meeting, I asked him if I could read my guzzles during his meetings. And he said, well, you know, I, I think about it. And um, he, changed, he decided, yes, I could do that. And I found myself involved in this program. And he just loved my poetry. He compared me to Shams, Valmiki, and then Rumi. And I thought, what? Perfect masters? I'm really not a perfect master. So, but he loved my poetry. And he said, when I became involved with uh, Donna, whom I call my Layla, and I, at the time I called myself Majnun, and Bao, for all, as we all know, he changed people's names, he gave them names. But he kept my name. Only in, when I became involved with uh, Donna, he called me, make sure you call yourself now Leila Majnun. <laughs> so that's fine, because that's how I feel about it. And he said, I'm going to put you in my Nazar. Went like this. Now that's when I really began to experience Baba within. Because he was in a sense, on my shoulder, next to me, inside of me. He knew what I was thinking. He knew what I was saying. When I had lustful thoughts, he knew about it because he was part of my life. Yet there was not one judgment. It was such a benign, friendly uh, experience that it was just, oh, it was just exquisite. And I remember being on the line at Trader Joe's, for those who know, who know Trader Joe's is a grocery, grocery store. And I was thinking of ways to commit suicide, you know, before these other things unfolded. And I was wondering how I could maybe go to sea and, and pretend that the rudder wasn't working. And I said, no, Bob would know that. And there was, to my right, invisible to everyone was, a figure in a, in a, in a, in a uh, easy chair, stuffed chair. And I expected to see Baba there because I knew that Baba, as a perfect master, would, would appear before people in, this, in these times, but it wasn't Baba, it was Bao. And I was just so confused because sometimes he was, for me, he was, he was a perfect master. And other times he was an opinionated uh, six planer telling me, you know, he, he used to be, he was a very opinionated man, but no matter what he told me, I loved him anyway. So he became my teacher. <clears throat> and at one point he wanted me to break up with uh, Layla, Donna, and I said, no, I can't do that. I gave him my heart. And if I withdraw my support for my, my relationship, then it would be unkind. And I knew that Baba wouldn't, that the whole crux of the new life was in being kind to each other. So I he said, okay, no more consulting with me. But we remained really good friends. And I spent three months with him and my son in uh, India in 2011 when my son was having a hip operation. So I would look at Bao and I would see Baba. And it's in the background as if he was, um, it was like Baba in, in, a, in a Bao skin. <laughs> and I remember reading the, the adventures of uh, life's pod, uh, the life of Padre, seen through Eric. I believe it was Eric who wrote this story. And um, Eriko, and he, um, Baba would often work through somebody as himself when they were aligned. He didn't take over them. 
like some spiritual uh, astral entities will do, they'll take over the, the soul. But he worked in concert with them because they were aligned. And it was that same quality that Bao had when he would, uh, when he wrote Lord Mayor and when he would finish his poetry. I mean, I think it's extraordinary. There's a, a stanza, a line to an individual and says, okay, finish this for me. So you don't know where God began and the uh, normal, you know, uh, his lover began. And to me, that's really extraordinary that Bao and he was so aligned that way. So he was my teacher for a few years and we would communicate a lot. And he always knew what was going inside me. And now being uh, 10 years rather quiet and minding my own business and not getting involved with the Baba world, <clears throat> well, much of anything, just relishing my relationship with my Layla. Um, I found that when I look at people, I am seeing Baba. And I, and I just remember how kind he was. And even these, even if the people are acting weirdly and behaving badly, I say, well, I don't have to agree with them. I can tell them, stop that behavior, <laughs> which I have done. And uh, or I'll sidestep it rather than get into a conflict. And um, I've had these, um, so that's what I do these days. I look, I'm always looking for my beloved. So one of the things I did with uh, Donna when we first met was instead of reciting the, the master's prayer as Dolly wanted us to do at the Samadhi, we all speak in the monotone, we are the preserver and protector of all. And it's all has to be in time. You can't do it at your own pace. You have to do it with everybody. And she gave me a dirty look when I was out of tempo, out of rhythm. But what I wanted, what I did with uh, Donna, and I had this notion of putting my hand on her chest, not on her boobs, but her chest, and she on mine. And we said the master's prayer to each other. Because I know ultimately that's who we are. We are the ones with infinite attributes. And we hide behind this form, this mask, working on our working our way like a caterpillar out of a chrysalis in order to become this the perfect butterfly. So we connected this at this really deep level. And that was the basis of our relationship and saying the prayer of repentance to each other. Because it's to each other that we we need to say these prayers to, to act according to, to his will, okay? So um, I get, I love looking at Baba's picture, but I really dislike the, the, the total focus to be on the picture, on the form, the outside, when he is the universe, when he is all of humanity. And you never know when he's talking to you or not, unless you listen. And, and respond to the, what your intuition tells you. And to do that requires trust. That's the fundamental quality and absolute, absolute honesty. It's, um, you have to trust yourself and trust the avatar. And to do that, you have to imagine yourself falling backwards into this abyss. And you know that the avatar put his hands out and catch him. And unless we surrender like that, then his face always is obscured by, by Maya, by other people's faces. So that's part of what I learned on the way. And um, maybe it's helpful, okay? And I have to leave pretty soon. So I want to say that before I have to leave, okay? Shepapa. Uh, you're on mute, Jeff. Okay. Yeah. 
Next we have Rosalie. <laughs> I have to say, um, this morning I had something very unusual happen. I was stiff. I was stepping out of my dwelling, my habitat, and a snake fell right on my porch in front of me. And I was just shocked. It wasn't a poisonous snake, but so uh, when I read about the topic tonight, I, I remembered this story that actually, it was stories that Baba would tell Baal, and I guess he told the other Mandali, but um, it's from this book, Nectar for Children. That, that's the mischievous chicken story. But this one is a repentant cobra. And I used to love the way Ba would say, cobra, cobra, cobra. Shall I go ahead with it or, uh, or I'll just recommend it? it? It is this and it flips over and there's some on the other side. What do you say, Jeff? Uh, well, let's. Let's wait a, a little bit because we'll get, get a little off topic a little bit. Um, no, it isn't off topic. But Oh, it isn't? No, it isn't. No, it's about okay. relating. <laughs> Go for it then. Yeah. Okay. It's the repentant cobra. I have to show you the picture. is fabulous. Ooh, yikes. Yeah, pretty uh, authentic. It says... In ancient times, there was a village in India surrounded by sugarcane fields on all sides. Only a small footpath led into town to buy things. A cobra lived in the field, and he was so clever that he could strike without warning from any direction. He would bite a villager and then slither away. Many people died because of his bite, and all the villagers were scared. They started going out in groups, armed with sticks and spears to kill the cobra, but they never got the opportunity. Yet even as people were dying because of his bite, the cobra himself was repenting. Then what happened? One day, a perfect master was coming along the footpath. All of a sudden, the cobra thought, because of my bite, many people have died. I am a great sinner. Why not go to this perfect master and ask his forgiveness to make me free from my sins? The cobra approached the perfect master and said, Master, I am a sinner. So many people in the village have died because of my bite. But now I am repenting and repenting. Master, forgive me. I am the worst sinner, but you are a perfect master. You can make me free from all these sins. And the master said to him, I will forgive you for all your sins, provided you stop biting people. I give you my promise, said the cobra. I will not bite anymore, master. Please forgive me. The master said, you are telling me that you will not bite anyone. But when I go away, then again, you will start biting the villagers. So I will wait for 15 days and see whether you have stopped biting or not. If I find that you have stopped biting, then after 15 days, I will forgive you and make you free from all your sins. The cobra accepted this. He went some distance away from the footpath and remained there, not biting anyone. And the perfect master left. One day, two days, three days passed. The cobra had not bitten anyone. The villagers were amazed to discover that the cobra had vanished. Somebody suggested, do not think that the cobra has disappeared. He must be sick. Because of that, he does not come and bite us. Because of that, let's see, we must search until we spot him and from a distance, 
we will throw all our stones at him. Then we will run away as fast as we can. But be careful, that cobra might still come and bite us. So we must kill him first. The villagers liked this suggestion very much and they each took up a stone in hand. Armed with their stones, the villagers went out along the footpath. After a certain distance, they found the cobra lying on the ground. Yes, he is sick, one of the villagers said, but now be alert. Everyone throw your stones and immediately run away. Otherwise he will bite us. The villagers threw their stones at the cobra and then they all ran away. The cobra was terribly wounded. Ants crawled, covered his body and were biting him. He was suffering and suffering. On the 15th day, the perfect master came. He searched for the cobra until he discovered him. How did this happen that you were wounded and suffering so much? Master, you asked me not to bite anyone, replied the cobra. So I stopped biting the villagers. Then they came and threw stones at me. Now I am very wounded. You fool, the perfect master said. I asked you not to bite anyone. But did I ask you not to hiss? Had you hissed at them, they would have run away. Anyway, that's the story that, that Bob and, and of course there's explanation, but to me it speaks volumes because those are the toughest people to get along with, the ones that are throwing stones at you or whatever. Yeah, and that was, I know Eric used to relate that story, but did that was originally Baba who related that? It was Baba, yeah. In, okay. in the book here, it says, yeah. about Baba says, I'll tell you a story, which beloved Baba had told me. Bao was saying that, yeah. yeah. All these stories are, are stories that Baba related, and he put him in, the, yeah. this book is precious, I have to say. It's so beautiful. Okay, thank you. Anyone, anyone going to bring up their difficulties or challenges in <laughs> relating to others? Well, I the do. The path is, like Baba said, the path is through others. Yeah, I, well, I have my son who we're out seven weeks now. He won't let me see my grandchild. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't know, really. I don't have any insight into, like, I don't see Baba in him. I see the devil. Um, and, I, you know, he's just been very difficult his whole life. I had him at the Oppositional Defiant Children's Center when he was two years old. And... You know, but I found a letter I wrote to him when he was 10, which I, in which I said he was a great kid and I enjoyed him so much. So I don't know, <laughs> maybe it was just the terrible twos. And maybe, but this recent episode has really, um, you know, I try to do that Stuart uh, Baker meditation, but I'm just so angry at him for his behavior and it's just difficult. Well, let's see what others have to say. Maybe in the course of it, you might get some hints. Maybe. But, you know, let's see uh, some of the things. Well, let's see what are some of the things that work that you find uh, in responding to others oh are you asking me no i was just putting it out to all of you uh, i think we got tony tony yeah hi um it, it's uh 
I mean, it's sort of an interesting. Well, first, I like the last example in in your write up, the most, which is enjoying people, and basically enjoying them as expressing bhava, in them. Uh, I, I like that a lot. I experienced that a lot, and and so then there's no question: is someone a bhava lover, or are they not a bhava lover? Or it's just, you just they they are a soul. Um, that's God. That's Baba at whatever level of their journey, like I am. So I, I do enjoy that. Um, then we have challenging situations. I'm really conscious. Before I started to see Baba in people, I definitely was, would see his hand in something. <laughs> and, um, and uh, well, the thing that came to mind for me here was uh, certainly marriage. I sometimes call it the marriage ashram. Um, you, um, if if Baba has orchestrated you well, as he has with my wife and I, we challenge each other at deep levels, and and persistent things come up, and it's not unusual for any couple, I think. But for us, Baba's clearly um, behind it, and he's involved in trying to in the efforts to work things out. And I was thinking a few months ago. I don't recall what was going on but we were having some kind of fight and you know what you said about Erich saying um, I love you Baba when he was talking to someone um, I I just found coming out of my mouth and out of my whole being I'm I was saying to Zeke Baba why are you doing this ba Baba why are you saying this? what is it you're asking of me and and it was the most wonderful moment because I, it was as if Baba whispered in my ear at that point, you got it now. Beautiful. You got <laughs> it. You got it. Now keep that consciousness up and you'll really get somewhere. Um, one other thing that came to mind um, after Harry Kenmore died and I was that group that formed around him, even when he was alive, there, were, there was a real strong yang energy around him from some of the the guys who wanted to be like right in there with him and sort of like soldiers in his, you know, for him or something. And, and I found it really kind of separative and I didn't like it. I loved, I knew who Baba was to me. I loved everything that poured out of Harry from Baba, which was just, it still uplifts me. But after he was gone, especially around that group, I withdrew a lot. And in retrospect, I was protecting my inner being from being too open in an atmosphere where it would not be cherished. I couldn't have put it in those terms then. And we were at a party one night or a get together at one of the guys' apartments. Well, uh, a, a very successful salesman he was. Uh, anyway, and he looked at me looking so timid as he saw it, timid and shy and, he, he said, you know, and I thought what he said was very funny. My wife doesn't think so, but I, I he said, I look at you and I, he said, I just imagine Baba at a great gathering and you're there and Baba is saying, I see myself in everyone and in everything. Somehow I can't see myself in you. And he was kind of, it was a joke about me being kind of so timid he, as he saw it. Yeah. But um, there is that too, that when we, whether we're seeing Baba in ourselves, whether we are feeling uh, Baba's uh, generosity and kindness and love and, 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 and humor and all these qualities in ourselves um, is as is equally important or maybe even more so than seeing in in others because if you don't feel them within yourself and feel his qualities in you how, how can you feel those good qualities in someone else oh, that's about it <laughs> yeah thank you tony very good yeah and next we have al al Al, you're on mute. He's looking for the mute button. Mm -hmm. 
A-L. There. We heard you earlier. Well, while Al Keep hitting the unmute here, button, but I can't we, get on. We got you. We hear you. You're good. Yeah, we can see you, Al. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. We are yes. able to hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. You can you can hear me? Yes. 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 Well, I, yes. It says unmute here. And am I well well just keep talking. Okay, I just see this. It says the host would like to unmute you. Stay muted, unmute. I keep hitting the unmute, but nothing happens there. Well, as well, long as you good. can hear me, that's okay. Yeah. But anyway, I'm, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I, I've been in a situation for 12 years now, and it still doesn't feel resolved. It involves me and two other people. And I don't really feel much animosity towards either of them, but the situation still feels unresolved. And I just want to resolve it, you know, just I want it to be resolved. So I, that's my intention. I'm thinking I'm taking one last stab to resolve it. And then if it doesn't get resolved, I just have to accept that Baba wants it to stay that way. But the two things that I've been working on as far as Baba's concerned is number one, in the beloved God prayer, Baba says, help us all. So you, so it's not like help me, it's help us all. So if he's helping me, he's helping them as well. And then another um, thing that really helps me is Baba says, um, whatever my master does is for the highest benefit of all concern. So it's not a question of if they gain, I lose. If I gain, they lose. Bob is saying whatever he's doing through all three of us is for the highest benefit of all concern or all three of us. So I, you know, I mean, I worked on this issue like in India about seven years ago. I think most of my stay there was trying to, you know, forgive this situation or resolve the situation. And it, I've come a long way, but it's still unresolved. But I did take some steps tonight and I plan to take the last big step, I think when I go back to uh, Washington for Thanksgiving. And hopefully um, if it doesn't work out, then I'll just have to accept that's the way Baba wants it for whatever reason he has. But I would like to have it resolved. And it, it does, like I say, help me a lot to think or to know that Baba, whatever he does is for the highest benefit of all concerned. So all three of us gain to uh, to win, you know, if, if the situation is resolved among the three of us. So I'll keep you guys posted yeah. at the end of the year, yeah. let you know what's yeah. what's going on with it. Al, I'm going to be more specific about it, but yeah, Al. You can come to Oregon yeah. and you would be very welcome. Yes, but would that result situation? <laughs> you know, I mean, I feel but, welcome here in Myrtle Beach. It's not a question of where I'm at. It's just a question of, uh, you know, sometimes, I don't know, some of these issues take a long time to resolve. Uh, and while you're trying to yeah. resolve them, I guess, you know, a lot, of, a lot goes on spiritually because you're, you know, you're asking Baba for his help and his resolution. And, and uh, you know, you want to believe Baba when he says whatever he does is for the highest benefit of all concerned. And, uh, you know, some things I don't know, they just kind of take time to work out or it takes some time before you accept that, hey, this is as far as it's going to go. The only thing to do now is just drop it and move on. Yeah, so I don't know, but I'll yeah. hopefully find something out. And let, let you guys know by the end of the year how, how it's progressing. Some some relationships are on the local train. They go they move very slowly, stopping at every village, town, and and busy city. And some are, are more on express train. You kind of it's unfortunate, but that's the case. Next we have Mayor Prasad. Yeah, Jay Baba. Jay Baba. So um, I thought I'll share 
three things that I normally do. First is that, um, you know, Baba told Iruj that, sorry, so Baba told Iruj that he was like a stain on the wall. So I remember that. And of course, everybody is like that. We're all stains on the wall, which means that the wall is the same for all of us. It's just that we are all different stains. So the because the wall is the same for everyone, uh, I try to remember that the other person is the same as me. So there is no difference. So I try to visualize that and try to feel that uh, there is no difference between the other person and me. And the second thing I do is that just like you need different uh, chemical agents in the world, you know, like you need Lysol to clean something, you need Windex to clean something, you need laundry detergent to clean something else. Baba uses different people to clean what is inside you. One person is not going to work. So, you know, if he wants to bring out jealousy in me, he cannot use my mom because I won't. There is no way for my jealousy to come out with my mom. But he might use, you know, somebody else, like my colleague or somebody else to bring that out. So he uses different people for, you know, for different, uh, for some of those to come out. And he definitely did this during, you know, when he was uh, dealing with his mandali all the time. Uh, he put two people that didn't, uh, that were conflicting together all the time. And he, he purposely made sure that they, you know, all of these came out. So I think because he's active for the 100 or 200 years, He's still doing the same with each of us. So I remember that and I, I actually, even though in the moment I may not feel that, after that, um, I actually thank him for using this person to bring out that in me because that's, a, that's his process of cleaning out the stain. Um, and of course, if nothing works, he'll use my wife. And that, <laughs> that always works. <laughs> that's why I that's why I say that he he my wife is uh, he took a mini avatar in my wife's form. So if nothing works, it, it is guaranteed to work. <laughs> um, and the third thing I do is I actually ask Baba audibly as if he is present with me. And I say, Baba, please help me to love this person. And then, and then I ask, Baba, please help this other person to be happy. That's those are the two things I ask. Beautiful, yeah, very <laughs> good. No, and and <clears throat> yeah, that all these different ways are we can all benefit from hearing each you know different ways that people. Uh, do this. Oh, we've got a, some people, <clears throat> more people showing up. Marian. Uh, hi, thank you. Yeah, this is a really good topic. And since I have part of my profession for you know, 30 years or so has been to as a therapist, transformational therapist. So trained in a lot of energy work and knowing I don't have just one body, a physical body. I have a number of bodies, mental and emotional and physical and so forth. The one that I'm most present with now for transformation is um, several years ago, I had the um, awareness that I needed to let go of a mask of niceness. And that with my children, grandchildren, because I wanted to be the good mother, the good grandmother, there were certain ways that I would be appeasing or hold things in, that I wouldn't say anything kind of sharp or anything like that, um, because I didn't want to, you know, drive anybody away. And it came intuitively that I was ready to let that go, that mask. And so I thought, well, that'd be pretty easy. And so in some of my support groups, I announced, oh, I am no longer going to be in that mask. I'm going to be much more forthright. And if there's anything kind of sharp there, I will take it to my therapist. I'll take it to meditation. I won't dump it on anybody. I will, but then I'll come forth with it. Well, I thought that was going to be so easy. And I would sail into that new territory just like a breeze. Well, 
everything that was hidden and buried in my unconscious, covered over by the mask of the nice girl, came up in my face. And it was, the, I call her mean, nasty Marion. And she came up like this. And so, I mean, I was having to get help constantly because constantly this was coming up with everybody I knew. And so, thank God, I have the relationship with Baba. Thank you, Baba. Of, I always had the intuition that Baba want, you know, wants everything from me, everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything. So I really, with Baba and with help, I had, I had some therapy help and some uh, spiritual help, is to release everything that was in my, in my whole energy system, all the nastiness, all the judgments, all the hatred, everything. So the prayer of repentance has become one of my best friends, because when I say it, I stop in the middle of it and I say to Baba, oh, yes, I've got this going on with that person, or I'm hating this one, or yes, you know, and it is so lightning. It's so lightning, but it's taken years because I thought I would just segue into being more real and more authentic and dropping a mask of niceness so easily. But I know in the world of duality, there's two sides of each coin. And if I was on the submissive nice girl side, I had to go over to the aggressive, not nice girl. And then as Baba has in the discourses, when you can hold both sides of duality, they start coming together into the unitive state. So I feel very fortunate. I have a lot of tools. I've studied nonviolent communication developed by Marshall Rosenberg for many, many, many years. So I'm in an empathy group. We help each other get to real feelings and real needs. So I'm very grateful for all the tools in my toolbox because it's very intense. It's very intense what comes up from the unconscious for me to give over to Baba. And I need as much support as possible and a lot of tools in my toolbox. So that's it. Thanks. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. Beautiful. <clears throat> Hi, Janet. Janet. Hi, yes. So I just want to say I'm so appreciative of this topic because it, um, it, it, uh, uh, I struggle with this, I want to say. Um, I'm, I tend to get impatient with people. And um, I mean, I don't necessarily, uh, you know, make people know that I'm impatient with them. But I, I feel impatient. And for me saying, this is Baba doing this that I'm impatient with, um, doesn't particularly um, mediate <laughs> my impatience. And I, you know, I look at myself, I go inward, what does Baba want me to learn from this and everything. Um, one of the people I'm impatient with is my sister, who is maybe, I mean, I'm not married anymore, and she isn't either. And so maybe we're doing this for one another since we don't have spouses to do it for. But um, yeah, it's just, I get triggered so easily by um, things, kind of a subtle competition that seems to just be held there. And um, so I... I I really would like to have a little bit more of the DNA of what's her name, Anita, I think, Jeff, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that was able to step back from people and really allow them to be who they are. Um, I mean, one of the things I've noticed is that one of the things that frustrates me is when I don't feel like I'm connecting with people. I mean, whether they're whether it's on a Zoom call or person to person, that that triggers some of my frustration because, like, I can't connect with what they're saying, or or um, or, or you know, we're just not on the same wavelength, and I I don't know how, I I don't have the skill apparently to give that to Baba, and and um. I like what Bob, what Mayor Mayor Prasad said about um, asking Baba that they that, that they might be happy, and I can definitely see that as a possibility with my sister. But I, I just want to say I appreciate this topic, and 
Um, I'm, this is not my field of expertise at all. It is, I'm frustrated with my <laughs> frustration at, 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 at my impatience with people. Yeah. And um, so I know that if Baba, if I want to be in Baba's ashram in 700 years, I, I do need to um, have a little more skill on this level. So thank you, Jay Baba. <clears throat> yeah, no, it's one. Of, there are a couple of things that that have been uh, that have helped me is by. Fortunately, I had a very um, always had a very pr profound interest in in why people are the way they are. You know, in other words. Uh, you know why is that person like that? What 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 has what's got <clears throat> what's been the background that has mm -hmm. led them to be that way? In other words, there's a, d a deep interest in them, and it and somehow, of course, people appreciate someone being interested in them. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean that that bypasses a lot of things. <clears throat> You know, I mean, if you feel that that like this woman Anita Putalik, she took a profound interest in you. How can you have a problem with anyone who takes a prof really a truly profound interest in you? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, because there you're at a very deep level. Uh, you know, I mean, whatever is going on between you is as at a deep level. Because I find that, <clears throat> and a personal interest in others is I, I think is the the one of the lower rungs of loving one another i first have to take a personal interest in them and then hopefully in the personal interest the the love starts to uh, come in there <clears throat> um, yeah i can take a personal interest in the people that i'm interested in <laughs> yeah and then people but I, I mean i say too like i say suppose someone is like very boring mm -hmm. <clears throat> Well, I, I get interested in what makes a person boring. That mm -hmm. person actually becomes quite interesting to me. Why? What is it b about them that turns people off? Mm -hmm. I don't mean I'm not being critical. I'm actually kind of being a little bit of a scientist, so mm -hmm. to speak. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's uh, and then here's the here's the other thing that I've said over the years is to be interested in others, I've had to lower my expectations on how they can behave. Mm -hmm. I mean, it took me about 20 years to, I would say, enjoy the company of my fellow Baba lovers. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I had to actually get the expectation of <clears throat> how they should be so that I could connect with them and then when when you kind of enjoy their company they behave a lot better than when you are when they can sense a, a criticalness you don't get the best out of somebody so anyway those are two of the <clears throat> things that i that have helped me thank you jeff that's connected. very helpful yeah <clears throat> yeah like uh, yeah what Thanks, what Jill, makes Wendy. people tick Yeah, I kind of feel like I created a monster. <clears throat> well, then, 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 what's the what is the nature of that monster? What are the ingredients that that's the thing that could be, you know, like I say, is not like rather than being stuck with a monster, what what are, what makes a person a monster? And then you get into them at a deep level. <laughs> Anyway, that I'm just throwing that out. <clears throat> I don't really know. Next, we have Wendy. We'll see what Wendy has to say mm -hmm. here. Um, this is always my challenge in life. I'm a problem solver. I don't. I don't like talking about something for 
ever and then not taking action. And I know that we all need to talk for a while, but then we have to do something. So I, I have this thing, if I'm interacting with someone and we're not getting along and there's an issue, I, my mantra in my head is, there's no problem so big it can't be solved. It's just the willingness to stay with it till you get that resolution. And that takes time. So it's not necessarily I need resolution fast, but I need some action. So specifically, a um, few years ago, I had something happen and somehow I developed from this um, an allergic response to certain laundry detergents. The ones, there's some that are, I think it's Gain or Tide or something. They have a really strong smell. And I just can't be in that for any length of time because if I do, I have trouble breathing and then my heart goes out of rhythm. And there's nothing at this point that we can do about it. So I do have in my family, a few people that like to use that laundry detergent. So I've told them, <laughs> I cannot come into your house <laughs> or you can't come into mine if you've got that smell. We can meet outside I'm not asking you to change your laundry detergent. I'm just saying I'm unable to be in that. Not because I don't like the smell. It's the response that I get from that. Yeah. So for a while, I was kind of in this place where I was like, I don't know how to deal with this because I don't feel like I'm doing anything wrong here. Um, I have to take care of my health. However, I mean, even when I go out grocery shopping, sometimes I have to make a fast right or left to get out of wherever that's coming from, just to get through that. Um, but sometimes, you know, when you're in those situations, it's hard because you feel like you're the bad guy and you really haven't done anything. But in my head, I know that if that was an issue for them in my home, then I would do something about it. Yeah. So, you know, trying to balance that. I, I mean, I love them all dearly, but I can't physically <laughs> move beyond that. Yeah. I hope I'm yeah. being clear uh, here. Yeah. Did you offer to buy the uh, uh, laundry detergent for them? I that will would not be your buy it, only resort. I have yeah. told them of all yeah. different kinds they yeah. can use. And it's yeah. not that that's yeah. not yeah. possible. Yeah. It, and so, and, you know, it's created, you know, especially it's in the summer, it's not bad because we can be outside, but in the winter months, yeah. it's hard. And, and that's what, and the thing that was, really amazing to me was the Baba group in Toronto, they know about it. And they immediately said, okay, those that use that said, no problem. We won't use that. So that you can come to the meetings. This was before COVID, of course, you know, and it was like, oh my gosh, I see these people once a month for our meetings and they did that, it, it was like, oh my goodness, like I was so touched, but then I was frustrated with my own family because it was like, oh my goodness. Anyway. Yeah. And one of the things is that, uh, I mean, I find in interacting, some people uh, really don't want to resolve things. No. The, the lack, the, the, and you have to accept it. In other exactly. words, you might have a conflict with somebody and you want to kind of resolve it and they don't want to resolve it. Right. And you have to actually be, what can I say? You, uh, a, 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 um, 
a kind of a, um, a happy acceptance of it, or yeah. what I mean, a yeah. a cheerful acceptance of it. Because some people actually, you know, sometimes with parents, they I, I I saw this in college where, you know, these guys they were, you know, they were never uh, their parents never approved of them. Mm. And 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 I could I could project you know they might be seventy five they might be fifty five and their father still dis disapproves of them, right? You know what I mean? You just you're you just it's not going to work. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and so you have to just be able to kind of accept that and not play into it. You know, yeah. Because you're just forever your happiness is always uh, being held hostage. Exactly. So you can go buy a tractor. Uh, yeah. I, I have a tractor, thank you. And I yeah. love being outside. Yeah. <laughs> but good but suggestion. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Yeah. Anyone else have the, the there are these, um, I mean, we're talking about finding, connecting, really connecting with people. Because if you connect with them deeply, you're really connecting with Baba in them. Mm -hmm. You're getting close to the essence of who they are, which is Baba. But um, some people won't let you in too far mm -hmm. um, for what, whatever reason. And it's hard yet to just kind of live with the fact that they, they only want to go so far to meet you. Mm -hmm. And that's if that has to be all right if you want to have some poise, maintain some poise. Mm -hmm. We've got another person here. Yeah. Tony. Hi, I'm just wondering if I could share a song. Yeah, let's wait till the end. Or, or, or is it? You mean is it pertinent to this topic? It's, it's kind of the spirit of the subject. That's I've okay. been, I've been singing it myself here for the last twenty okay. minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay, go for it. Yeah. Uh, it's actually the first um, Baba song I ever wrote, and I didn't know much. And I put whatever I did think I knew, I put in the song, including that when they uh, interred his body, they shouted, Avatar Mayor Baba Kijay. Um, so if anyone wants to sing along. And I've done it rockier since then, but in the beginning, it was much more of a folk feel, which is what I'm going to do now. Avatar Mayor Baba Kijay. Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai 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 All is oneness beyond creation and illusion is the game. Ego consciousness maintains your station amidst the crying of self-inflicted pain. Avatar Mayor Baba Kijay, Avatar Mayor Baba Kijay, Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai 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 You hurt yourself when you hurt another The law of karma so very, very plain We all are one And there is no other There is no other Cause we're all the same Avatar Mayor Baba Ki Jai Avatar Mayor Baba Ki Jai Avatar Mayor Baba Ki Jay, Avatar Mayor Baba Ki Jay, Avatar Mayor Baba Ki Jay, Avatar Mayor Baba Ki J. 
shame Search for truth and reality and the answer is so very clear love is all the one reality any other leads to head and fear avatar mayor baba kiche Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai 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 World disaster is just reflection Who's the loudest when everybody shouts? Just a little love spreads like an infection. If you have peace within, you can have peace without. Have a Tom Mayor Baba Kije. Have a Tom Mayor Baba Kije. Have a Tom Mayor Baba Kijay. 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 J Baba. Yeah, beautiful chorus. I like that descending. <laughs> That's beautiful. Hey, um, so, um, I, at some point, I, I, well, just to end here, maybe we can pry uh, something out of Goer. But I, I, I do want to say one thing that I find is to expect uh, justice. I mean, I've had to, to, ju to expect justice in this world from others is um, kind of courting dis disappointment and to expect ethical behavior from others is to expect too much and eth unethical behavior and injustice are a couple of Baba's as Marion always talks those are in Baba's toolbox to bring out things in us that we don't like to have to deal with. You know what I mean? You can have a nice pleasant life and then somebody, and you have a nice home and everything like that, and then in a nice forested area, and then the guy in the next lot cuts down all the trees and puts up a, a, a dumpy house. You know, I mean, so you think that's part of, that's in Baba's toolbox to you know, to wake us up. I, I mean, I don't like it, you know, but they are there. I mean, they're not like from, they're, they're, they're not from a non-Baba source. <laughs> they come from him. And, I mean, and so it's, a lot of the adjustment to other people is having to experience this from others and being kind of helpless to do anything about it. Sometimes you can, but sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. And you have to kind of live in a state of, finding the equilibrium is a tremendous challenge. Uh, yeah. And I think and, Jeff, know, having, a, having these moments where we 
I, I said earlier, where we all are on the same track. We're all dealing with the same things in different yeah. scenarios. And and it's comforting to know that we're not alone. And this is this is what Bob is doing to yeah, I mean, up. these are things that deepen us, sometimes great disappointments and betrayals and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, make us go deeper and deeper and eventually we'll wind up in the soul. But <clears throat> yeah, so uh, just to pry um, goer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Any there's nothing. There's really nothing much more that I can add. Um, all of you have spoken so eloquently uh, of your own um, experiences and such. Uh, I totally agree with what Mayor Prasad said about, you know, um, the people, the, the situations that come up in your life that you confront are his ways of taking out that dirt within ourselves. So we have to accept what comes our way as um, as best we can and and learn from it and take it that this is for our own good um, that he does. And what you said, Jeff, about um, keeping your expectations low about other people, that also is very true. And if we if we just keep that in mind, I think it's so much easier to go through life in general uh, as things come our way and situations come our way so uh, just know and be you know being more aware that this is Baba's way of um, cleansing us of making us become uh, more aware of him and uh, keeping him more with us uh, that's that's about I think that's about the gist of it yeah so yeah and that That's nobody good. is really opposing Baba. Yeah. It's all being done by Baba, even if right. we... And I got a, I got a final quote. Mm -hmm. Now, the, this quote came from, in the 30s, Malcolm Schloss had some trouble in the Western, Easterner ashram there in Nasik. And he was kind of, he was uh, more of a, a bit of a mystic, as uh, as Darwin and Jean said. He, he was kind of a mystic and also a meditator. <clears throat> and a lot of people are a little bit of frivolous and and seemingly unspiritual around him. And, you know, he, he kind of brought that up with Baba. And this is what Baba said to him. And I, we've all seen this quote, but this is this is very good. It is I who loves you. Remember in the future that when anyone hurts you, it is I who hurt you. When anyone loves you, it is I who loves you. When anyone laughs at you, it is I who am laughing. When you love anyone, it is I whom you love. I am in all things. How can you realize my infinite presence if you shrink from me in those who hurt you and welcome me only in those who please you? I mean, that's, that's you know, that's um, undiluted hard liquor, you might say. Um, but I, I mean, anyone, I mean, Anyone have some things that they, I, I just do feel like there's more to this subject, but maybe we may have to just save it for another day. But methods that help us um, be able to connect with Baba in others or the essence, connect with the essence of others. I mean, one of the things that, uh, that it's hard to get past the personality self of others because our personality self may rub up against their personality self. Even if our personality self is in harmony with their personality self, sometimes that's just a pleasant experience, but it's not a soul deep experience because it's just 
personality self to personality self rather than soul to soul or essence to essence. You know, so how to, and somehow people's personality selves, we may like or dislike them, or we like them in the morning and in the afternoon we didn't like it. Uh, we, you know, those reactions prevent us from contacting Baba who's just right, or their soul that's just right behind them. I mean, and D Darwin talks about the personality self being like a, a storefront, you know, and if you come up to the storefront that says uh, whites only and you're black, well, you're not going to get, you're not going to be able to go, you're, you're not going to be able to get to their soul through the front door. They're not going to let you in. So you may have to come around the back side, you know, <clears throat> but per... It, our personalities get in the way of contacting the soul of others. It's you know, and it's we take the we think, oh, that's Tony Paterniti. That's him right there. I can see it. That's his personality. Now I got to deal with I got to deal with that, but I don't actually have to deal with that. <laughs> it, it, it's we can bypass the personality. Uh, and but that, uh, like I said, this is a lot of the work to be done. Um, so Jeff, if you yeah. have a really close friend, for example, um, that you have that kind of open relationship where they can say, "No, well, you know, you may be taking this too personally, or maybe you need to be more active, or whatever." There's an honesty within the relationship that you can say the hard topics, speak the hard topics as well as the nice fluffy ones. To me, that's that's a real gift to yeah. have a friend or friends that are gonna call you up when you need to be called up, you know, that, okay, pull it up here, Wendy, you know, you could be doing this or, you know, I can't think of an example right yeah. now or vice versa. And, uh, yeah. But and, like I say, if you kind of, if you meeting essence to essence, essence to essence are like an ocean liner yeah. and any squabbles won't, won't cause the, the ocean liner to right. capsize. Right. Yeah. But yeah. if it's just personality, personality is a couple of like rowboats and it's, yeah. Any kind of emotional current and, and the boats can flip over. So a lot are, of people, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. But, but um, when you have like a long time friendship and you've reached yeah. kind of more of an essence, then you can really be honest with each other. Yeah. Yeah. And do you without think the consequences? Other, yes. Do you think the others are because you have to be right or you feel you need to please that person? Is that you think? Well, I mean, that's always, I feel that's always uh, perilous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the more you can kind of connect with their essence, the more latitude you have in what you can say. Yeah. And exactly. do. Yeah, exactly. Even though they may just be relating to you as a personality, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you get a little more. The, the 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 deeper you get connecting with them, the more range you have. Right. But like I say, if if it's just rowboat to rowboat, you know, the first kind of tide that comes in, yeah, <laughs> it might wash you both up on the shore. Right. 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 Uh, but. Like I say, I mean, I feel I can't expect the other person to connect with me at a deep level. Hmm. I, I mean, but that's nice if they do. Yeah. But if I if I if I'm connecting more with the, at them at a soul level, I'm more apt to to get a soul soulful response from them. Right. Right. And like I say, once you find someone like your close friend there, 
It, the amazing thing about when you're essence to essence with somebody, you can see somebody after 10 years and you just uh, pick up where you left off. Right. You don't have to know what they did and they, they don't, they're not changed at all to you. Right. Uh, that's what I find. I agree. And like I say, when I, when I met the Mondali, they responded to me as I had always known myself. Mm. The, 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 the me that I was tracking my whole life, they just responded and they're just meeting me for the first time. Mm. And they did that with all of us because they are responding basically to the Baba in us, the, the mm -hmm. essence of us. And so you feel like, wow, you feel seen. Right. right. And when you feel seen, you're, you, you soften. For sure. You know? And when you're not seen. Unity. What's that? Yeah. Unity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful thing. And, and you yeah. feel safe in, in responding with and in communicating with such people. Yeah. yeah. With such souls. Yeah. yeah. Makes, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, they've got your best interest in mind because, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, takes it to a different dimension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I would, this is Mary, and I'd just like to make yeah. one last comment because something that's a process that helps me a lot is if I feel that I'm better or worse than anybody, you know, on their personality level, then I know I'm making them into my source. I'm giving my power over to them. Whether I feel better or worse, I'm giving my yeah. power to them. I'm not surrendering to Baba. So I know in my life, powerful questions bring powerful answers rather than me figuring it out. I have many psychological tools and spiritual tools, but there'll come a point where I'm like this up against the wall. And it means my only recourse is to turn to Baba and, and say, I'm making them into my source and not you. And I need some help here. I, I want to surrender this to you for the support that I need so that I may resolve that and shift that source to you and not to them and see them as they are. So it's a it's a relationship. But I always know that if I'm better or worse than that person, they I've made them into my source. Yeah. So go to my source. Yes. Like, yeah, because when it, when you're kind of responding essence to essence or soul to soul, there's no Mm -mm. superiority or inferiority no. it's uh yeah there's no it's, it's a real lower. It's, it, yeah, it's a yeah. real sharing when you're yeah. when it's a sharing whereas the other is not a sharing yeah yeah and and uh, i i've mentioned this before and one of the things that's the one of the biggest um mm -hmm. drawbacks or the obstacles is that we're may all uh, so often making self-reference. How does that person feel about me? Rather than being over into them, we're comparing, you know, they, they feel I've got, I know this and they know that. I know a little bit more than they do or they know more than me. That self ha is hard. That, then you got your, your attention is half on yourself and half on them, or maybe 75% on yourself and 25% on them. Ideally, is take away so that you're a hundred percent focused on them, and not on how how they are making you feel, how they judge you, how they feel about you, because that just that just um, that just diffuses the focus. Does that make sense? It's and it's and that's the thing. The Mondali were not in. They actually didn't care how you felt about them personally. They cared about you, but they're not saying, oh, oh, does, do they like me? That, that, that got knocked out of them. I mean, Baba may, you know, eventually knocked that out of them so that there's only one thing they're focused on is what's right there in front of them. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. And I, I think I've mentioned before, I once said to um, uh, Mar uh, Marijuan Jessawala, you know, you were with Baba, you know, one month out of the year in Mondali Hall, all that time with Baba, and you, he's greeting people, he's doing correspondence. What were the thoughts and feelings that went through your consciousness, what, you know, through your mind while you're there over the years? 
And he said, I had no thoughts or feelings. I said, Marilyn, you had no thoughts or feelings? He said, no. He was over into Baba, and he wasn't checking how Baba felt about him. He, you know, I mean, I said, let me shake your hand, Marilyn. I mean, that's, that's humanly impossible. In fact, the stories are great when you, when you hear Bill LePage talk about how he felt Baba felt about him or how he responded to Baba. You know what I mean? Here's a guy that's over into Baba. <clears throat> and <clears throat> um, who would think that you'd have to actually uh, put an end to all the self-reference, you know, and just get into the object of your focus 100%, you know, anyway. It's uh, such a growing experience for so many of us. Say that again? It's such a growing experience yeah. for all of us. Yeah, I think Baba is, is going to move all of us in that direction. It's the way to go. You know, I mean, it's, that's <laughs> what, that's what, what, I mean, that's one of the things that's happening until you get like Darwin, where you say sooner or later, you discover you're nobody. Uh -huh. That is not an unhappy discovery. You know, you just don't have to, you're, you're not important anymore. But Prakash, you had your hand up there. <clears throat> no, I did, but uh, I really liked uh, what was being discussed. I mean, what you said, Jeff, that's so beautiful. I mean, I, I like that 100% focus without having any focus on the self. Otherwise, you know, you're, it doesn't work. But, but uh, remember, you were talking about uh, methods to connect people. I had a couple of silly methods. I think I did mention one before. Uh, which somebody else used uh, uh, in Washington State. Her, I forget her name again, Cynthia somebody. And uh, her method of connecting, you know, there is a disharmony between herself and the person. Hey, uh, you know what? One second, I'm, I'm at the center and I'm getting a phone call. Oh, Put a okay. pause on that, just a second. Yeah. Mayor Center, this is Jeff. That's that's the name. Thanks, Mahir Prasad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, you guys were talking beautifully. I mean, it's just just hanging on with you guys is good enough for me. <laughs> 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 That'll fix all my problems. <laughs> for everyone. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry about that. Yes. <laughs> Go yeah. Yeah. No, nothing. A couple of short things. I mean, I didn't mention earlier. You probably know, but one of the methods of connecting, which uh, this lady whose name is here, Cynthia Barry and Tos, um, she she whenever she found something that is not in harmony between her and the person she's dealing with. And obviously there's a conflict and she would paste a picture of Baba on his face, oh, on his yeah. or her face, you know, <laughs> I mean, uh, age uh, related. So if the guy is young, she says, okay, let me pick something when Baba is 40 years old and things like that. And that seemed to work for her and, uh, and which I thought is very, very creative. And <laughs> because you're mentioning about the methods, right? And then um, I, I also found uh, the, the method that always works, which I really have to work on, is having hell of a lot of patience. I mean, you need patience <laughs> dealing with uh, and connecting with people. I mean, I tell you, um, I mean, particularly at the level you're talking about, uh, <laughs> the soul level and whatever, and bypassing the personality. So that requires uh, in my mind a lot of patience and I, I i have a quick story i don't want to take much time because we know we are past the time but uh, i remember one story when i heard uh, wayne dyer speak uh, and 
he narrates about a, a lady who had a near death experience and then she comes back to life and uh, and then when was highly interested so he asked her what happened i mean in this particular process i mean you went through this and you came back how was your life before and after and that lady said one interesting thing she said i was a person who was trying to please people over and beyond just so that you know they they like me they appreciate me and they don't find anything wrong with me and things like that and that's before uh, the near death experience and after this experience of uh, whatever that happened she says i'm much more natural now and uh, i don't do this over pleasing anymore so i don't yeah. know what it tells us but i think it tells us probably she probably realized earlier she was doing it all for herself just so that nobody points a finger at her and then you know that kind of thing yeah but after the experience i believe she probably tr- realized and had much more uh, divine wisdom wherein she realized that he you know i mean it's not any more about her own uh, you know uh, asking for love from others by pleasing them too much yeah. and it's yeah things like that yeah no yeah. that's i mean that uh, that's yeah I, yeah where if you're trying to do it so people feel good about you mm-hmm. and you're spending so much focus attention on yourself and not on the other person and they yeah. will they they will make your life miserable <laughs> and tony can. is very quick tony knows the name as well anita murjani that's a name <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> a lady apparently she wrote a book yeah you know one of the things that th- this is this is something i i you know got from uh, darwin <clears throat> darwin said that there is an invisible current in everyone but the invisible current of of most people is going toward i my me and mine toward me that current has to be reversed we have to flow out to to the world and flow into baba now what happens is is that if if my current goes and i and it hits somebody and it and i don't like them then that current stops and i actually diminish myself by that much anyone if i say if i don't like little kids because they they're unruly they make so much noise my being flows out and it stops then i'm cutting out the child in me i've cut i've cut off a whole side of myself by not flowing toward these kids if i have problems with the you know with the opposite sex and i don't flow through them then i am cutting myself off from my feminine side so whatever we don't flow through or toward or through we diminish ourselves by that much and we become smaller and smaller i don't like people that are not you know of my ethnic group i don't like people from foreign countries i don't i mean before you know it you're living in a in a a trailer you know or a shack the soul wants to kind of live out over a whole countryside so that's another thing that another uh, approach on this that it's important to, now that doesn't mean that you necessarily express it it's at an internal level because if a woman flows out to certain gentlemen that may, they may get the wrong idea you may have to give them a drop dead look to keep them at a distance but you don't want to close your heart to them that has to it has to flow invisibly you have to do like the cobra Hiss. yeah you just exactly that you have, to, you have to hiss but you have to flow anyway that's that was invaluable for me in in my life that i yeah. darwin yeah may i ask you a question please yeah do you have poison oak we have poison oak here and poison ivy yeah do you, you want have... some i can mm-hmm. send you some plants <laughs> do you have it are you scratching oh no i don't have it uh good that's too much caffeine makes me uh kind of scratch 
the difference. No, that's the redness from that room, Jeff. I know. I, I, yeah. I don't know what <laughs> makes this red anyway. Redwood. <laughs> I mean, I could be in the middle of winter totally pale and I got this sunburn, you know. <laughs> so anyway, if there is there any last thing? But I just, yeah. You know what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to see if I can get um, Laurent to, to, uh, to take us through... Uh, Forgiveness, forgiveness or surrender, it's for on Tuesday night. I'm going to. Uh, he he's very good. Um, I I mean I thought he was very, very articulate and um, and so it's either going to be surrender or forgiveness. I might even try surrender because we've had forgiveness lately. So How about I'm, both, both. I mean, well, at one time and then another. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's yeah. my thing. They're both so, fabulous, soldier. So it'd be interesting because he uh, he's written a book on surrender, and he's also has a lot of the Baba, all the quotes of Baba on surrender that might be helpful. You know, Jeff, that um, there's a Hawaiian. It's called Ohopona. Ohopono Pono. Yeah. yeah. And uh, funny you were talking about forgiveness because that just... that is, yeah, we'll talk. Uh, yeah, uh, that there's that's a very deep uh, thing, and Baba, Baba, kind of um, going to say instructed me in that method. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's just four segments to it. It's nice. Yeah, it's simple. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Are you guys ready to go to sleep here on the <laughs> East Coast? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's have a few moments of silence. Mm -hmm. Jay Baba. So thank you everyone. Jay Baba. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Baba. Thank you. Yeah. Thank oh, you. oh, yeah, Nasreen. I oh. Okay, <laughs> Nasreen. You, you've forgotten me. Ring the bell. <laughs> Avatar. Jay Baba. Thank you. Thank now you. I go to, thank now you, I can Jeff. sleep soundly. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Nasreen. Thank you. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, Baba. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Jeff. A wonderful night. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Indeed. 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 Wonderful yeah. discussion. Yeah. Let's all have Baba dreams tonight. Yeah. <laughs>